The Victoria line must have had one of the most complex gestation periods of any underground line. At various times it was going to terminate at Angel Road, East Croydon, Sanderstead and Coolsdon. It was going to run through Streatham, it was going to run through Oxford Circus, it was going to be a main line, it was going to be a tube line, it was going to be long, it was going to be short. It was the best of lines, it was the worst of lines. It was a constant subject of dispute between the government, London Transport and the British Transport Commission. The earliest versions of the line were suggested during the Second World War, and the line didn't open until 1968. So it's probably no surprise that it took them an awfully long time to settle on a name for the new line. The idea of having to actually invent a name for a line was a new one. The Victoria line was the first completely new tube line since the Edwardian era, and the first to be built by London Underground in its entirety. Prior to that, nearly all lines had been given names that were some variant of the company that had built them. The Metropolitan District Railway became the District Line. The Central London Railway became the Central Line, and so on. The two exceptions were the Northern and Circle Lines, which had each been built by two companies. London Transport, which London Underground was a part of, decided that something geographical was appropriate. The president they chose to follow was the Bakerloo Line, which had originally been the Baker Street and Waterloo Railway. So, a name that was a portmanteau of two places the line served. This wasn't as easy as you might think, not least because, in the 1950s, it was by no means certain where the line was going to run. At this time there were funding issues. The British Transport Commission, which London Transport was a part of, needed more money. But the government, having been dealt an economic blow by the Second World War, weren't willing to give it to them. So it looked like the full line, from Walthamstow to somewhere south, was not going to be completed. At least, not all at once. In 1954, they determined that they were going to concentrate on Victoria to Walthamstow, but even this wasn't likely to get done in one go. So London Transport played with the idea of opening it in stages, but which stage to open first? In 1956, the idea was considered of only opening the section from King's Cross to Victoria, which would take some pressure off the Circle Line. But this wasn't a popular solution, mostly because this meant that both ends were at extremely busy mainline stations. They wouldn't be serving the suburbs, and neither King's Cross nor Victoria would likely be able to handle all the interchange passengers. They also played with the concept of King's Cross to Walthamstow only, but here they had the opposite problem. No relief for the overcrowded central London area. Victoria to Finsbury Park was close, but no cigar. In 1959, they decided to go for the whole route. It wouldn't be cheap, but they felt that the loss of benefits from a shorter version of the line would outweigh the savings. But I'm skipping ahead the way I sometimes do with these things. The name! In early 1955, a meeting was held between John Elliott, the chairman of London Underground, and David McKenna, the chief commercial and public relations officer. The Underground has always been very publicity conscious. They bandied different ideas around. A name they liked the sound of was Wolvik, Walthamstow to Victoria. Kingvik, King's Cross and Victoria, was also played with. Neither of these really sounded right. But wait a second. Kingvik? Vic King? Viking! Brilliant! That's the toughest name ever given to a tube line. But no, not quite what they were looking for. By the way, I note that they keep talking about Victoria and King's Cross, but as every tube user knows, the station is called King's Cross St Pancras. Now, I do know that in the 1950s and 60s, St Pancras wasn't doing so well, and British Railways did actually seriously consider closing it. So I wonder if the reason they didn't mention St Pancras is because they didn't think it was relevant in the long run. I have no evidence whatsoever to back this hypothesis up, but I think it's an interesting piece of speculation. Anyway, McKenna and Elliot also played with the Mayfair line and the West End line, reflecting the route the new line would take as it left Victoria. But again, these weren't quite there. Eventually, the one they settled on was one of the simplest, the Victoria line. And honestly, doesn't that just sound like one of those we've been sitting here for hours ideas? One of those, I'm so tired and we keep coming up with the same ideas over and over again, let's just pick something ideas. It just seems so basic. 
Actually, they could have taken a bit more time over it because it would be just over 13 years before the line actually opened in 1968. And maybe then they would have realised that the Viking line is totally the best name. I hope you enjoyed this victorious tale from the tube. If you did, I would be very grateful indeed if you would leave a like and subscribe for more content like this if you have not already done so. Do you think Victoria Line works? I've always thought it was a bit of an odd one. It's not like it's the only line that goes to Victoria, but on the other hand, I've never heard anyone complain or be misled by it. Can you think of another name? A better name? Let me know in the comments. Thanks as always to my generous as ever donors on Kofi and Patreon. You don't have to give, but you do. You are the Vikings to my line between Victoria and King's Cross. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the Tube.